Disclaimer. Before watching this review, I strongly recommend watching my review for Uncharted Drake's Fortune first, as this is a follow-up to that video. Look, I'll even wait for you. Nah, just kidding. Let's get to the review already. As I mentioned in my review for the first Uncharted game, my introduction to the series was through watching a friend of mine play the second Uncharted game in a 10 hour playing session, so it's right to assume that I became interested in the series. I also mentioned that I bought the first three games in the series and after finishing Drake's Fortune, I obviously had to move over to the second installment in the series, with the secondary title Among Thieves. I bet the game was supposed to be named Honor Among Thieves as the phrase is mentioned in the game and makes more sense, but they couldn't have used it since Sly 3 had already claimed that title. Anyway, my review for Uncharted 1 wasn't very positive, but does the sequel make up for its predecessor? Well, you probably already know the answer to that as I raved about the sequels in that review, but nonetheless, let me go into detail with my thoughts on this game. Since Drake's Fortune was such a major hit, Naughty Dog had to capitalize on its success. With its sequel, they decided to go one step beyond and boy did that pay off! The first game in the series was difficult to make since it was Naughty Dog's first game on the PlayStation 3 and because the console was initially very challenging to program for. Since they put even more effort into making the sequel stand out, it was perhaps as difficult for them to make, if not more. Uncharted 2 Among Thieves released exclusively for the PS3 on October 13th, 2009 and met with critical praise. It became even more successful than the first game in the series as it outsold Drake's Fortune by nearly 2 million copies and received lots of Game of the Year awards for 2009. The story follows main character Nathan Drake once again as he goes on yet another adventure to find yet another treasure. This time around, his goal is to find the lost city of Shambhala where the Chintamani stone is said to be located. This ancient relic can grant immortality to whomever harnesses its power, meaning this could pose a giant threat to mankind if it was to fall into the wrong hands. Sounds a lot like Indiana Jones 3, doesn't it? Nate finds a knife-like key artifact that can grant passage to many different temples and only one of them reveals the pathway to Shambhala. Journalist Elena Fisher and old mentor Victor Sullivan both return for this installment. But new characters are also introduced, such as double agent Chloe Fraser, jerkweed Harry Flynn and crime boss Soren Lazarevich. I find the plot to be way more intriguing than it was in the first game, as it has better characters and the stakes are set much higher. While it's a simple plot, it's executed well and it flows at a natural pace. Some of the plot points are quite comparable to Indiana Jones 3, The Last Crusade. The Chintamani Stone is essentially the Holy Grail since they both had the power to give immortality. Armies of Evil seek this power in both storylines too. Even so, Uncharted 2 doesn't bear much else resemblance to The Last Crusade, so it can't be considered a rip-off. Nathan Drake, Elena Fisher and Victor Goddamn Sullivan haven't changed much since the first one, which is fine since they were likeable characters in the first place. Though I will have to say that they have a little more depth to them than in the first game. Especially Nate and Elena, who have some dramatic scenes together and separately. Victor Sullivan is the same as he's always been, funny and charming, but I'd say his comedy is a little funnier in this one. I'll move over to the new characters as I've already discussed the main protagonists in detail in the other review. First up is Chloe Fraser. She's a double agent who pretends to be working for the bad guys but is actually on the good guy's side, giving Nate and his friends classified information. Remember when I said Elena was a good love interest for Nate? Well, Chloe is also a good love interest for him. She certainly knows how to kick ass and she's really adventurous much like Nate himself. They also have a few scenes together where they express affection for each other, a lot more openly than between Nate and Elena. Now onto the villains. Remember when I called the villains in the first Uncharted game bland and generic? That's definitely not the case this time around as Lazarevich and Harry Flynn are memorable bad guys. I'll cover the latter first, Harry Flynn. At the start of your adventure it actually seems like Harry Flynn is your friend but that changes when he eventually betrays Nate during a mission, leading Nate to be in prison for 3 months. Flynn works for the main antagonist Lazarevich and gets oppressed by him a lot, as Flynn is often at times shown to be cowardly and incompetent. He's constantly taking shit from people, both good and bad, therefore seeming like a weakling. Nevertheless, he's still an interesting character as he's more mentally confused than being sheer evil. He's still a jerk though. Soren Lazarevich is a ruthless man, expressed through his terrifying voice and vile behavior. When someone under his control fails him, he either shouts at them or straight up murders them. His ideology is deemed bizarre by many as he even states at one point that Hitler and Stalin were great men. While he may seem like a generic villain on the outside, there are a few reasons why he's not totally bland. He highly believes in his motives and even challenges Nate's morals at some point, telling Nate that he's no better than him for killing all of his henchmen. Unlike the villains from the first game, Lazarevich is actually menacing and had a lot more mentions and screen time than they ever did. 
For my new characters, I can think of Jeff, Tenson, and Carl Schaefer from the top of my head. Jeff the cameraman and friend of Elena was such a pointless character because it didn't bear much significance to the plot. Tenson was a really cool guy and not being able to properly communicate with him led to some comedic moments. Carl Schaefer was an interesting character who was able to convince Nate to continue on with this journey so it did actually contribute to the story. The gameplay is very similar to the first game, which would be a negative according to me as I found the gameplay super repetitive. However, that's not quite the case with this game since it has been polished up and there's more variation this time around. It can still get repetitive but nowhere near as dull as in the first one, as it feels smoother and the controls aren't as finicky. The varied visuals also make the gameplay a lot more tolerable but I'll get to that later. In addition to this, there's a bigger emphasis on stealth gameplay. Heck, the first level is pretty much an extra lengthy stealth section. Climbing is also more fun than it used to be since there's a lot more stuff happening on screen. You sometimes have to climb quickly as the walls are collapsing, and at other times you have to shoot at enemies while holding onto a ledge. Then there's the puzzle solving. It's more or less the same as it was in the first game, but since it was the best gameplay aspect of that game in my opinion, it's obviously not a bad thing. Speaking of bad things, there aren't many in this game to be honest. Aside from picking up ammo being extremely tedious, especially when you pick up an unwanted weapon instead. Seriously. There should be an automatic pickup system for this game. I covered the gameplay in my other review, so there's not much else to say, but I'll conclude this segment by saying that the gameplay, just like the story, is a great improvement from the first game. While both the writing and the gameplay were step-ups from the game's predecessor, the presentation is what truly makes the first game look bad in comparison. As I mentioned a little earlier, there's more variation in the visuals. A significant problem I had with Drake's Fortune was a great lack in exactly that, but it's been completely fixed in this one. You'll still find the usual jungles, caverns and underground areas, but there are also museums, cities and snowy mountains, just to name a few. The variation helps terminate the repetitiveness that was present in the first game. I like the look of every place I visit and I can easily get immersed into these locations. Not to mention that there's also a lot of culture to be found in each of these places. The best example being the peaceful Tibetan village in the Himalayas. Then there's the lost city of Shambhala which is one of the most beautiful locations I've seen from a video game. In my review for Uncharted Drake's Fortune, I mentioned that Uncharted 2 had way better action set pieces and memorable moments than the first one and it released only two years after. The game has a prologue that describes this game perfectly as it throws you right into the chaos. I was only able to remember one set piece from the original game and it wasn't even that impressive. With Among Thieves on the other hand, I can recall so many stunning moments. Such as the derailed train climb, the entire train section itself, the collapsing building, the helicopter chase sequences, the battle with the tank, etc. Surprisingly enough, I got blown away from witnessing these spectacular moments when I first played it in 2015, and I can only imagine what it was like playing this game when it originally came out. Alright, the final section of this review is dedicated to the soundtrack. You'd think this would be an underwhelming note to leave it on considering all the praise I've given the game, but it's actually not. The soundtrack in this game is a much great improvement over the one from the first game. The themes stand out more and even though there's still mostly background music to benefit the atmosphere, they're still pleasant to listen to on their own. I'm a big fan of Asian inspired music and since majority of this game is set in Asia, there's a lot for me to enjoy with the soundtrack. The track called Reunion in particular heavily reminds me of music found in The Legend of Korra. And it's possibly my favorite track in the game aside from the main theme of course, which has been slightly altered, but it still sounds close to identical to the original. For my conclusion to this review, I have to deeply apologize to Naughty Dog. Before I played this game, I was being prejudicial towards the Uncharted series, and especially among thieves, in the sense that I thought it was an overpraised Indiana Jones slash Tomb Raider clone. After having played it, I realized it's a masterpiece of a game. Few games are able to exceed their predecessor in every possible way, which is exactly what Uncharted 2 Among Thieves managed to do. I was so impressed by it and it definitely deserved all the awards it received back in the day. I can't seem to find many faults with this game. I can name a few nitpicks such as Elena's friend character not adding much to the overall story, ammo pickups being super tedious, and that there's no real improvement to the puzzle solving aspect of the game. However, those are just tiny flaws that don't matter in the grand scheme of things. Besides, the puzzle solving was good to begin with, so the fact that it wasn't tampered with too much might have actually been a good thing. I forgot to give out a score in my review for the first game, but I'm giving it a 6.75 out of 10, meaning it's just one step away from being considered good by me. For Uncharted 2 Among Thieves on the other hand, I'm gonna give a 9.75 out of 10. It's a near perfect game on its own and an even better sequel to a game that desperately needed polish. 